Um, I think this is actually a good point to go over some of the wave terms, because I realize uh, there are some terms that I should have introduced that I kind of forgot to last time. So let me actually use this opportunity to introduce some of the wave terms. So let's see. Um, wave terms. I think there is a one term that we did cover last time. And that one term that we did cover last time relates to this uh, constant here. Or if you are looking for it elsewhere in the things we talked about last time, it refer, uh, this constant here. What does this parameter V describe? Velocity of what? My, you know. The wave traveling, right? So um, to be more specific, when we talk about velocity, there's actually two different kinds of velocity. There's a velocity of the bead moving up and down, right? And there's velocity of that shape that's moving across. Here, when um, the context where these Vs occur is not the um, velocity of something that's, uh, it's not velocity of a physical object that's moving. Because that velocity in this example is up and down. And that's not the velocity we are interested in. We are interested in the velocity of this shape, which is moving across horizontally. Yeah? So we give it a name, because um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a very particular type of velocity. And it's, a, in some sense, different from velocity of a tennis ball that we have been talking about. Right? So we call this wave velocity. And we will have some opportunity to address in this in detail, but this is a new-ish concept. It's uh, familiar in the sense that it's a velocity. It's uh, meters per second. It's fast describing how fast something is moving. What you knew here is what is that something. Um, so far, everything. whenever we were talking about how fast something is moving, that something used to be something concrete that we can touch. With the waves, um, I'm not sure if you can touch waves. Because uh, I think we did do this example last time. So if I send two waves, so if I have, um, so instead of having no end, if I have an end here, and if I send two waves, and when two waves kind of touch each other, they simply move past through each other. They don't really collide, right? We did this last time, right? Yeah, and we'll you know, talk about this in a little more detail. So, so the, the wave as a concept is kind of new because um, you cannot touch a wave in the same way you can touch physical object. Yeah. So, so the, for the velocity of that wave, we're going to give it a new name, wave velocity. And there are actually a few more terms that you already know that, um, that, um, that we didn't explicitly talk about last time. The biggest of that would be, I guess, uh, I could call it amplitude. Or if I want to be explicit, I could, I could call it wave amplitude. Like, what, what do we ever mean by amplitude if we're talking about amplitude? Like, in what context have you seen that word, amplitude? I mean, you have seen the word amplitude, right? It's not new. So in what context have you seen it? Asia? Yeah, with oscillations, right? That's why I have this pendulum. So amplitude describes how large the oscillation is. Or you know, in general terms, you can say amplitude refers to sort of the size of the displacement. So here, if we are talking about amplitude, um, so this would be amplitude. So this, uh, the dotted line is the equilibrium position. And how far away this point is, that's the amplitude. And you can see that. Um, there is a relationship between energy and amplitude. So, when, so right now in this simulation, I made a damping or any kind of frictional stuff go to zero. Then when I send a wave, 
this amplitude remains the same as the wave moves across. It's um, like, I mean, which bit is moving, which bit has the kinetic and potential energy changes, but this amplitude remains the same. And that kind of uh, represents this, some constant of an amount of energy that's moving along the string back and forth, bouncing back and forth. And if I, once I include damping or some frictional forces, then you see this amplitude decrease over time, meaning the mechanical energy is being lost to thermal and whatever energy. Okay? So that amplitude is something you are actually familiar with. Um, we didn't explicitly mention it last time, but you are familiar, or you should be familiar with the concept of amplitude from oscillation. So we are going to use that. So these are the two terms that you should already know or already have some kind of intuition for. Um, I should introduce two more words that are probably going to be new. That uh, way of categorizing different waves. We are not really going to do much with it, but I think if I don't uh, mention them in class, then like, then you know I'll be embarrassed in the future when like. Anyway, so you are supposed to know this when you have gone through this class, so <laughs> let me discuss it now. It's a way of categorizing wave. So the kind of wave you see here right now, it's a very particular type of wave. It's one of the two different types of wave. So let me illustrate the other type of wave on this slinky. It's easier to do it on this slinky. So, oh wait, I don't know what's going on here. Let me just stop it. Um, so with this slinky, I can illustrate two different types of wave. Uh, let's see. Can everyone see the slinky? It's not fading into background too much? OK. So oops. <laughs> the wave that you are seeing on the simulation would be something like this. So this is one type of wave, right? Uh, you, you see that if I shake one end, then this uh, sort of travels across the slinky. But that's not the only way. There can be a shaking here. Um, you, I, can, I can shake this slinky um, this way, front and back, or I can shake this slinky right to, left to right, this way. You see that if I do a little compression push, that push gets transmitted through. Like I make a small one pulse of this, and that sort of travels across almost to the end. And if I do this periodically, then you say something that's more periodic like this. So this is one version of that uh, regular kind of oscillation. And this is another version of that oscillation I can give that results in a wave. So there's, and um, so what uh, the way you distinguish between the two is essentially the direction of displacement relative to the direction of wave propagation. So the, the ones that are easier to visualize, the ones that are easier to you know, see, like in that, uh, see like on that um, simulation there are the ones where the direction of displacement is perpendicular to the direction of wave propagation. So those we call transverse waves. So, yeah. so, so if you hear the word transverse, it's uh, referring to that particular aspect of um, that particular aspect of a wave property. When someone describes a wave as a transverse wave, as in that wave is a transverse wave, they are saying that wave velocity, wave velocity is perpendicular to, um, I, I think I kind of actually have to spell out, sorry. Um, so when someone talks about transverse waves, transverse waves, they are, um, so wave velocity is perpendicular to the uh, propagation velocity. Wait, sorry. Um, I said it wrong. Um, displacement. Mm, how do I say it? Uh, um, displacement direction. Displacement direction is perpendicular to the wave velocity. 
wave velocity is in the same direction as the propagation direction. Does that make sense? Yes? So if I have this linky, if I uh, introduce any kind of displacement here, like, so I've been doing front and back, but I can actually be moving this in a circle. Like uh, that's uh, one way I could move it. But however I move it, this uh, wave shape goes from left to right. So that's the wave propagation direction. And if I'm shaking this in a way that it's perpendicular to left to right, you, I could be moving it this way. Well, maybe not easily. Um, so, so if it's perpendicular, that's a transverse wave. The other direction, so the other direction is where the direction of displacement was along the direction of wave velocity, either in the same direction, or if you look at it carefully, sometimes you will see this moving backward. So, so when it's uh, um, sort of parallel or anti-parallel to the direction of wave uh, velocity, that's what we call longitudinal. So in a longitudinal wave, longitudinal waves, the, so we are still dealing with the same quantity. We are looking at the displacement direction. Displacement direction is now parallel to the wave velocity. Good. And here's why I think we, so there are actually quite a few examples of longitudinal waves. The two most common ones that you should know are sound wave. So sound waves are longitudinal because the way sound is generated is through uh, something like this speaker that you will see in your lab today. Um, it's kind of a tiny speaker, but um, well, I guess I do have a bigger version. So you know, one of the ways you can generate sound wave is with a speaker. And the way it works is I have this membrane, and um, there's a, something that's like a motor that's uh, vibrating this membrane. And the vibration is pushing the air back and forth, and that's uh, how sound waves are generated. And you know, it, as this vibrates, it's a vibrate, um, causing the air molecules to move in this direction, and the sound, sound waves move propagate along the same direction. So sound waves is an example of longitudinal wave, and some types of waves come in both earthquake waves. There's a component of earthquake wave that's longitudinal. That's the P wave, or I think P stands for pressure wave. Um, and there's a component of earthquake wave that's transverse. That's the S wave. I think S stands for shear. Um, so you know when you saw me do this to the slinky, where if I move this end in circle, actually you are seeing both types of wave. There's a places where it's being compressed. That's the longitudinal wave, and where it's you know off from this line is where the, there's transverse wave. Yeah? And um, most of the time, for the purpose of visualizing waves, we'll stick to transverse. Because with the longitudinal, sometimes it's difficult to, to see. Um, see this important factor about wave. None of this segment of uh, the medium that the wave is traveling in, it actually travels. So when I do it longitudinally, like when you look at this one ring, It'll move a little bit back and forth, but it never actually moves with the wave for a long distance. So, I mean, so you know, if you look at it carefully, you can see that. But that important fact about wave propagation that we looked at last time, it's easier to see with the transverse wave, because there the direction of displacement is perpendicular to the direction of wave propagation, so it's easier to separate them conceptually. So, but this is one. Um, wave categorization that I should have told you a little bit about. Uh, now that I have, I probably won't really come back to this. Most of the waves that I draw, you will see them as transverse. And I'm kind of fine with that. Um, but you should remember that the longitudinal waves do exist. Like sound waves that we are going to deal with in the lab today will be longitudinal waves. 